So, hello everyone. My name is Emmanuel, this is joined by Christoph, and I'm presenting an incremental anytime algorithm for a multi objective query optimization. Let's talk about multi objective query optimization first. So, um, traditionally, you care about long cost metric in query processing, which is execution time. But nowadays, you have many scenarios in which you actually care about multiple cost metrics, and you have the choice to trade between them. Consider, for instance, cloud computing. Cloud computing, you can often trade uh, execution time against monetary fees because if you rent more uh, resources from the cloud provider, you may reduce execution time. And the uh, set of optimal cost trade-offs for a given query, also called the Pareto frontier, might look somewhat like here. Or consider approximate query processing where you can choose the sample density in order to trade result position against execution time. And of course, you can also consider the combination of the two aforementioned scenarios, which would be approximate query processing in the cloud, and then you already care about three cost metrics. And there are many other examples, like you have a trade off between the amount of system resources that you dedicate to executing a query and its execution time, you have trade offs between energy consumption and execution time, and in crowdsourcing, there are actually several papers that are connected to this here at Sigmund, you have a trade off between the cost metrics latency, execution cost, and also accuracy. So, in summary, in many scenarios in query processing, you have a trade off between multiple cost metrics. And this has a fundamental impact on the query optimization problem, the problem of finding the optimal plan for a given query, because traditionally you had only one cost metric and the goal was to minimize that cost. But nowadays you have many cost metrics that you can trade between, so the goal is rather to find the best trade-off between them. And that means that we need to integrate user preferences into the optimization process because some users might care more about execution time but others care more about execution fees. And um, there are several possibilities of how we can integrate user preferences into the optimization process. The paper that we presented last year at SIGMOD assumed the following uh, model. Uh, users basically specify the preferences together with the query as prompt and input to the optimizer. And then the optimizer will analyze those preferences in order to find the optimal query plan. The problem with that is that there are studies showing for users it is generally very difficult to formalize their preferences. And often users don't know what they want before they actually see it. So from the user perspective, a much more convenient interaction model would be the following one. The user issues the query to the optimizer, then the optimizer visualizes the set of optimal cost trade-offs and the user selects his preferred cost rate off out of that. Um, the problem with that model is efficiency. Already calculating the complete Pareto frontier is often not feasible and might take hours even for simple queries. We can approximate the real Pareto frontier, as we have shown uh, in our last paper, but the problem is uh, this still might easily take a minute, and for an interactive interface, this is still way too long. For that reason, we propose to incrementalize the optimization process. This means that we divide the optimization process into many small incremental steps. And after each step, we provide intermediate optimization results to the user, and we give users the possibility to uh, dynamically uh, specify cost bounds for the optimizer in order to guide optimization towards parts of the search space that are more interesting. So this is an anytime algorithm that we propose since we don't return one approximation of the Pareto frontier but multiple approximations of increasing quality and it is an incremental algorithm since we, uh, we take care of avoiding redundant work over multiple approximations since uh, as you see uh, we are always approximating the Pareto frontier for the same query multiple times and if you don't pay attention then you might have many query plans that we regenerate multiple times for instance. Um, how does this look from the user perspective? So let's assume that the user has issued a query then the optimizer will very quickly generate a very coarse grained approximation of the Pareto frontier. And uh, if the user doesn't do anything, then this approximation is refined 
and refined. And maybe at this point the user notices that actually he wants to restrict the execution fees, then he can dynamically specify a cost bound, and now the optimizer will take the hint and will only focus the refinements on the area of the cost space that is below the cost bound. So now the refinements will focus on the left part of that picture, like that. And finally, if the user feels that the approximation is sufficient, sufficiently close, then the user clicks on one of those uh, cost trade-offs in order to start execution. Now, in order to embed this scenario a little bit into the greater context, we have considered multi-objective query optimization in different scenarios. And uh, the scenario that we are considering here is the one which probably imposes the most severe constraints on optimization time. Since we are optimizing at runtime, not before runtime, and we are optimizing in interaction with the user, and the time constraints for an interactive interface are uh, the highest. Now I'm going to give you a little high level overview of our algorithm. You find more details in the paper. Um, these are the primary components of our optimizer. Um, the user interface takes care of the interaction with the user and controls the resolution refinements. And it invokes the incremental optimizer by specifying that the Pareto frontier should be approximated for a given resolution and for given cost bounds. Now, the optimizer is incremental because it maintains two set of query plans across invocations. This is the set of result plans. And if the optimizer generates a plan that is immediately relevant for the current resolution and the current cost bounds, then this plan is inserted into the result plan set. But if the optimizer generates a plan that is not immediately relevant for the current resolution and bounds, but might become relevant later once the resolution gets refined or once the cost bounds change, then this plan is also not thrown away, but we rather store it as candidate plan in order to avoid having to regenerate it in later invocations. And the cost trade-offs that are visualized to the user, they are taken from the result plan set. Now we're going to look at the incremental optimizer, because this is probably the most uh, challenging algorithm. The fundament is the well-known dynamic programming uh, principle that you know at least from the Accenture algorithm, I suppose. So we basically uh, start by calculating approximated Pareto frontiers for single tables, then we use those results in order to calculate approximate Pareto frontiers for two table sets, and so on and so forth. Um, what is specific about our optimizer here are two design goals that derive from our scenario. First of all, we want to avoid redundant work over multiple invocations of the optimizer. Like, for instance, we want to avoid regenerating plans, or we also want to avoid re-verifying re whether one candidate is relevant in the same situation twice. And another point is that we want to keep the optimization time proportional to the current resolution and the current cost bounds. And this is actually non-trivial. Because if we don't pay attention, then if we, if we invoke the optimizer a couple of times, then the plans that we have generated in prior invocation, they will cause overhead for the current invocation. And so it is non-trivial to guarantee that the current optimizer invocation is proportional in terms of optimization time to the current resolution and the current cost bounds. Um, on a high level, our optimizer uh, executes two steps at each invocation. First of all, we might still have stored candidate plans from prior invocations, and we retrieve, retrieve the potentially relevant candidate plans and check whether they might have become relevant for the current invocation. And we prune those candidates in order to uh, get rid of non-relevant plans. And in the second phase, we use the surviving candidates from the pruning in order to uh, generate new plans, since those candidate plans might actually be partial query plans, meaning that they only join a subset of the required tables. And this means that we have to combine them with other partial query plans in order to obtain complete query plans. I'm going to uh, discuss some of the subfunctions of our optimizer in order to give you a little insight. Uh, for instance, the pruning function of our optimizer is uh, particular in several ways. So, First of all, for an incoming plan, we check whether that plan uh, exceeds the current cost bound specified by the user. And if that is the case, then the candidate plan might still become relevant once the cost bounds change. So therefore, we will index it as candidate plan. 
if the plan does not exceed the current cost bounds, then we check whether the plan has a cost vector that is too similar to the cost vectors of other plans that we have already in the result set. And uh, if this is the case, then we still might index the plan as candidate plan for later once the resolution gets refined. If the highest resolution level is currently reached, then, however, we can safely discard the plan. And if the plan passes both checks, in that case, it is finally inserted as result plan. Note that in the proning function, there are actually a couple of details, uh, a couple of uh, challenges, because you want to keep optimization plan proportional to the current resolution cost bonds. So if I would, for instance, compare the new plan against the cost of all plans that I have generated before, then I cannot guarantee that the current uh, optimization time is proportional to the uh, current uh, bounds and resolution. Um, I have said that we retrieve candidate plans and uh, we want to retrieve candidate plans efficiently. This is why we index plans in a multi-dimensional index structure as illustrated here. First of all, we index each plan by the plan cost. In this example, we have only one cost metric, but in general we can of course have multiple cost metrics. And in addition, we index plans by the resolution level for which they could be relevant. So if a plan is indexed for resolution level 2, it means that it is relevant for, it could be relevant for resolution level 2 or higher. And when I retrieve candidate plans during an optimizer invocation, then I exploit the current cost bounds in order to uh, prune those plans and I also exploit the current resolution bound such that a uh, plan retrieval basically corresponds to a range query within that multi-dimensional index in structure. And in blue, you see the plans that would be relevant in the current situation. Um, we want to avoid having to generate plans twice. Um, this means that uh, for each a plan set, we distinguish between plans that have been, that are fresh, that have been newly inserted and between plans that we have already known before the current optimized invocation. And we uh, take care uh, of only combining uh, new partial plans with old partial plans or uh, new partial plans with uh, new partial plans. I see that uh, there's a problem in this slide, so actually you should have new plans uh, for both uh, entries on top and old plans for both uh, entries on the bottom. The point is that we do not want to combine plans that we have already combined before. Um, in order to analyze the complexity of our algorithm, we basically view the whole process from the perspective of one single query plan. Um, after a plan is generated, it is indexed as candidate and might be re-indexed as candidate a couple of times before it is finally inserted as result plan or discarded. And we can show that this whole life cycle happens only once per query plan over a series of optimizer invocations. And also, the number of times that the plan is re-indexed as candidate is actually bounded. And altogether, this means that the, the amount of work that I have for one query plan, it is actually bounded. And based on this result, we uh, prove that the optimization time uh, consists of one incremental part, which goes to zero over multiple optimized, after multiple optimized invocations, plus some moderate optimization overhead, which corresponds to the complexity of single objective query optimization, which is very small compared to the complexity of multi objective query optimization. And uh, also, we can prove that the optimization time is always proportional to the search space size, which was one of our design goals for the algorithm. How does this look in practice? We also did an experimental evaluation based on the TPCH benchmark uh, with, an, with a cost model that includes uh, three uh, cost metrics. And our goal was to show that our algorithm can indeed split optimization into many incremental steps, while al other algorithms cannot do this. So we compared our algorithm against non-incremental baselines that correspond pretty much to the uh, algorithms for multi-objective query optimizations of our paper at the last SIGMOD. And uh, so we measure uh, optimization time and we generate uh, different approximations of the Pareto frontier of one specific query for different resolution levels and we vary the number of resolution levels as well as the final target resolution that we are aiming at. 
And uh, if you only have uh, one resolution level, then being incremental doesn't help anything. So in that case, our algorithm actually has a slight overhead compared to the baselines of 20%. However, already if we have five resolution levels, then um, our algorithm is uh, two or three times faster than all of the baselines. And if we increase that to 20 resolution levels, then the distance, the gap, increases to factor seven. <coughs> And for the moment, we are aiming at a low target resolution. And uh, if we are aiming for a high target resolution, then the relative distance between our algorithm and the baselines increases even more. So, in total, um, we have motivated why multi objective query optimization should be an interactive process in order to be more convenient for users. And we have hopefully motivated that uh, incremental anytime algorithms are a good way of addressing that problem. And we have presented and evaluated the first such algorithm. Thank you very much for your attention. Looks, all right, questions? Um, could you comment a little bit on space complexity? All right. Space complexity is higher than what you would have with a non-incremental uh, algorithm because you store all those candidate plans instead of storing them away. So the space complexity is uh, significantly higher than uh, for the normal algorithm. Um, it is actually, uh, for each table set, the number of plans that you have to store, it increases uh, exponentially in the number of tables. Um, yes. So, but this is the trade-off that we have to make because otherwise we have to possibly regenerate those plans at later indications. In each case, the additional space complexity is bounded. So it is all, it, is, it cannot be like that we have to store all possible query plans or something, but it is bounded in the number of uh, result plans that you have. Good question. Other questions? So maybe I missed something. Can you describe a little more detail why your algorithm uh, does better relative to the non-incremental algorithms when you go to a high resolution? Um, so going to a high resolution makes the entire optimization problem harder, right? And um, I mean, our algorithm, uh, for each invocation, it incurs some constant uh, invocation overhead, and it has some incremental part. And um, for a harder problem, the incremental part of the algorithm, which vanishes over multiple invocations, it is more significant compared to the constant uh, invocation overhead. So this is why having a harder problem makes incrementalization even more useful, so to speak. Yeah. Any further questions? So maybe I have a question like this. So, <coughs> for the uh, different plans, uh, which are, let's say, relatively close to each other in terms of the Pareto boundary. How this different do the plans look like? Are they completely different from each other? Or they are uh, kind of similar in, whatever, in, in the structure? Um, so are you talking about the cost value of the plan? No, 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 sorry, the actual plan. So the actual plan that you generate, is the optimal plan that you generate for a given Pareto point, and then this neighboring to a Pareto point, for example. Those plans might share many subplans, actually. But uh, we exploit this. So one plan basically is represented by having pointers to its subplan. And so this exploits the fact that uh, many different query plans can actually have a, a similar structure. Okay. So, so the sense I got was that a user who is interacting with a system of this kind has to choose a. So you have an interactive mechanism in which I choose a particular plan. And then I may choose a different point, but then I do end up choosing a plan. And that's the plan you execute, right? But in a, the problem with this one would face that the estimation of costs are pretty approximate in any of these particular plans that you get. So it's not clear when I make a decision on this. I may want to do this on the fly at the execution time itself, shift to a different plan. This is something that you support or is it something that you do not support? So we basically assume that once execution has started, then the user does not detect anymore. So this is before execution starts, basically. But do you think this is extensible to the situation where on the fly basically shift to different I think, time. yeah, probably it could because, I mean, if you want to change at execution time, then it would be advantageous if you don't have to re-optimize and if you keep those uh, plans stored. Yeah, sure, definitely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, no more questions, then let's get it. Thank you.